For tonight's ceremony, also please welcome three-time NJAC Coach of the Year, Mr. Mark Brown and his coaching staff to Sector Quarter. As we begin our ceremony to recognize our senior class, which features three young men who have left an impact on the program, whether they were here for one year or four. Ladies and gentlemen, our first senior this evening is this year's team captain from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Willingboro, New Jersey, and Willingboro High School, number 10. But here are some of his remarkable accomplishments. 
He was the 2019-20 P3 News Preseason Division III National Player of the Year. Sam is a two-time NABC All-American and was a 2019 First Team All-American. Sam is the two-time NJAC Player of the Year, one of only five players in conference history to achieve that feat. Sam earned the most prestigious accolade possible for an athlete who participates in the NJAC by being named the 2019 NJAC Male Athlete of the Year. He was the first male athlete in the history of NJCU to win the award. Sam was a 2018-19 NABC National Player of the Year finalist, the 2018-19 NABC Atlantic District Player of the Year, the 2018-19 P3Hoops.com Atlantic Region Player of the Year. He's a two-time NABC First Team All-Atlantic District, and Sam ranks fourth in school history with 1,734 career points entering tonight's game. He's a 26-time NJCU Athlete of the Week selection, a six-time NJAC Player of the Week, and a two-time choice this season. And Sam is the only two-time D3 Hoops National Team of the Week selection in program history. But more than anything, Sam Tony has been an inspiration. Sam's story of perseverance has touched people all around the country, and his career will culminate in April when Sam will be recognized in the Final Four as the 2020 winner of the United States Basketball Writers Association Most Courageous Award, the first ever male in NCAA Division III history to win the prestigious award. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for one of NJCU's all-time greats, number 30, Sam Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, a final round of applause for your 2019-20 NJCU men's basketball senior class, Jeff Haddock Jr., Shamik Moore, and Sam Tony. Thank you, gentlemen, for wearing the green and gold. We wish you the best of luck in your final few weeks of your collegiate basketball careers, and we wish you the best of luck in your future life pursuits. Please come back and visit us here often at NJCU. Ladies and gentlemen, your men's basketball senior class. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the John J. Moore Athletic Center here in Jersey City, New Jersey, for the nightcap of our doubleheader in our first game, the NJCU Women's Gothic Knights defeated Ramapo by the score of 64 to 63 in overtime. And tonight, it's the men's team of NJCU taking on the Ramapo Roadrunners. NJCU comes into tonight's matchup. Overall record of 12 and 12, 9 and 8 in the NJAC. Ramapo. 15 and 9 overall, 11 and 6 in the NJCU. And joining me as a color commentator today for the nightcap and also for the second half of the women's game is NJCU graduate student Nina Carbonero. Did I say that right, Nina? Absolutely. All right, Nina, how you doing tonight? Good, good. It's good so to good be to here. have you. What a thriller we had in the first game with the women defeating Ramapo 54 to 53. If this nightcap with the men's teams can live up to that, we'll be in good shape. But first, Nina, let's give credit where credit is due on senior night here at the John J. Moore Athletic Center. Big props to senior Jeff Haddock, senior Jameek Moore, and senior Sam Tony. Um, you've been part of NJCU Athletics while you were an undergraduate student here. It's got to be special for these seniors here tonight. Absolutely. Uh, NJCU basketball has always had a big following, and for this to be their senior night and have the the JMAC absolutely packed and have the thrill of the win from the women's game, it's got to be a good feeling coming into this conference Absolutely, game. and some huge, huge implications for the playoffs on the line here tonight, Nina, including NJCU getting the win, and they're in. They are one of three teams, NJCU, 
Rowan and Montclair that are still able to qualify for the playoffs. Montclair playing Camden right now, Rowan playing Keene, clearly the two easiest games on the schedule uh, record-wise would be for Rowan and Montclair and JCU certainly with their hands full tonight against Ramapo. But like I said before, NJCU wins tonight. They're in. The destiny is in their hands. It's going to be a tough task for the Gothic Knights tonight. Um, is this a good position to be in as a, as a former student athlete? It's really up to you to produce and get the, the W, or is there going to be a lot of pressure on this team as well? No, I feel like throughout the season as you go, you know, it's always you control your own destiny, but it's nice when you've worked so hard throughout the season up until this point where you actually fulfill that to be your destiny. You actually control your playoff, your playoff spot, where you're going uh, uh, at the postseason level. So it's nice to be able to be at this point where if they win, if they take care of business on their home court on senior night, no other night to better have the audience and all the support here today. I think it's just going to, all the elements are there for them. Chris. Absolutely. You couldn't ask for a cooler moment for our seniors and, uh, the head coach of NJCU in his 13th season, Mark Brown, starting Tariq Holmes, Jeff Haddock, Jamik Moore, Jameer Calhoun, and Sam Tony. Sam Tony heading into tonight with 1,731 career points. Such a great story, and so good to see Sam Tony graduating in just a few short months. Tip off possession, NJCU, as they get things started early. Opening three-point attempt, no good. That was Jeff Haddock Jr. for the Gothic Knights with a miss from three-point land, but they are coming out firing. Ramapo driving down the lane with the floater. It's good. That was Rob McWilliams on the board first. The Roadrunners from Ramapo College in the first ha half opening moments here from the John J. Moore Athletic Center. That shot no good from the corner. Calhoun with a miss. This fadeaway jumper does not get the roll. Taking that shot yet again, Mick Williams for Ramapo. Bring the ball up the floor, Tariq Holmes. Back to Holmes. Holmes around the arc. Pull up jumper. Shot. No good. Offensive rebound, put back, count it. Gothic Knights on the board. That was Calhoun, the junior, 6'5", out of Manchester, New Jersey. We'll go back the other way. McWilliams. McWilliams with the left hand. He'll dish it out to Romano. Romano with the right-handed half hook no good rebound Holmes Holmes with a beautiful pass count the basket unless they're going to call the foul that looked like goaltending to me but they're going to call a foul on the play that's going to go against Ramapo as Jameek Moore will go to the line another one of our seniors tonight 6-5 out of Hackensack New Jersey and the guys were celebrated and honored before halftime. I mean, before the game started. And of course, yeah, you know, that's an interesting point, Ian. It's in his 22nd year at Ramapo, Ch Coach Chuck McBreen. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, we had so little time to talk to the coaches because of the doubleheader, Nina. And being new to the conference, what I always like to do is familiarize myself first with the coaches, and I'm sure that'll come with time, but I'm thrilled to be sitting here alongside the lovely Nina Carabinero, and I know your sister is about to start the police academy, New Jersey State yeah. Trooper in the making, am I right? Yep. That's so cool. Are your parents proud? Yes. Very, very cool. So we're off to a raucous start here. Speaking of McBreen, he's... He's not wasting any time voicing his displeasure with the officials. Inbounding the ball now, Connor Romano for Ramapo.
Romano will find McWilliams back to Romano. Romano. Romano goes baseline. Good look inside. Gorgeous move and the basket to Jordan Zagadou. Excellent pass on the inside to Zagadou. We're all even at four here in the first half. 17-40 opening moments of the game. Three-pointer. Count it. Three-point goal. Jeff Haddock, Jr. Another one of our seniors with the three to give the Gothic Knights this 7-4 lead. Connor Romano deed up hard by Sam Tony. That shot blocked. Huge block. Not in this house. At least not right now. Gothic Knights will control. That block got the fans off their seats, including the student section. <laughs> got to give them credit, credit, Nina. They stuck around for the second game. Absolutely. And another basket for the Gothic Knights. Tariq Holmes and Coach McBreen for Ramapo has seen it up. He calls a timeout with 16.47 remaining in the first half as we are just underway here and how do I say it? The J Mac, right? John, yep, the J Mac. Thanks for working with me. You know, I want to be I want to be the savvy veteran, but we got to crawl before we walk. <laughs> Absolutely. I live in Jersey City though, and it's been such a joy to get to know Ira Thor and some of the other folks at uh, Rutgers Newark, St. Peter's, and been really impressed overall with with those three schools in particular, and having had an opportunity to call some games over there and. Hard to say which one I like best because that wouldn't be a smart idea for me, but I am thrilled to be here, and I really uh, have been impressed with all, all kidding aside, with all with all three schools. So thanks for your help here tonight, Nina. No problem. As we're back underway. McWilliams off the glass and good. Tariq Holmes, 5'10", junior guard out of Jersey City, New Jersey. He'll bring the ball up for the Gothic Knights, driving with his right hand, loses control, keeps it in bounds. There's a scramble, recovered, loose ball recovered by the Roadrunners. Transition game has been quick, and that floater is good by number five, I believe that was Marquise Kindle. Hard to see. We got Coach Brown taking up a little space in front of us here at the scorer's table. But back the other way, we've got Tariq Holmes for the Gothic Knights. The big man on the inside oh, with a power move. Sam, Tony, all oh six God. foot four. 225 pounds Sorry to of Tony. Our nope. student section over there has got Sam Tony's oh, last name. Oh, look at that. Right over there, we've got it. Yes. You gotta love it. Student section represented going shirtless. T-O-E-N-E-Y. Tony. Thank God for the indoor arena. <laughs> <laughs> A raucous affair here at the JMAC. Little finger roll. Dipsy Doodle not going to get the NJCU bounce. And I'm going to tell you, this is end-to-end -end action. Count the basket and the foul to NJCU to bring Ramapo within one. On the line now to look to complete the three-point play for Ramapo, Marquise Kindle.
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, here live at the John J. Moore Athletic Center. First half of action. NJCU men taking on Ramapo on senior night. Conference matchup. Last regular season game of this season. As things have gotten off to a spirited start. As the shot clock expires, turnover, Ramapo, shot clock violation against the Roadrunners. It'll be NJCU basketball, NJCU up by two, 13-59 to go in the first half. The big man, Tony, underneath. Nothing doing, he kicks it back out. Tariq Holmes for three. That's going to come up short. He gets his own rebound. Holmes over to Tony. Nice head fake. Dishes it back to Holmes. Tony will hand it off to Tariq. Tariq with the left hand. Drives the lane. Does not get the roll, but a strong move nonetheless by Tariq Holmes. NJCU holding the two-point lead. And we're going to have a foul on the play. That'll be against the Gothic Knights. Oh, I'm sorry. That'll be against Ramapo. I believe number 31, uh, Zagad Zagadu. Did I say that correctly? The, yeah, absolutely. You were close. <laughs> foul was against Jordan Zagadu. Thank you very much. You Nina. That look inside is broken up, stolen. McWilliams, fast break. Up to Kindle and the basket to draw even with NJCU. Ramapo, 13 to 13 now. Another whistle on the play. What do we got going on? Need another foul. And that's going to be against. Number one. Ramapo check into the game now. Number 25, Michael Clement. He replaces Sam Tony. Clement uh, broken up by Ramapo. Another steal, another turnover. Oh! Beautiful block. You gotta be kidding me! A huge rejection by Michael Clement, who jumped out of the gym to get a hold of that one. Unbelievable! Everybody on their feet. Clement just checked in and literally knocked that ball about 10 rows into the stands. That is so important to come in and absolutely make a difference just from the gate. Floater is good. And that was Jason Battle for the Roadrunners. Man, they are going back and forth. Another turnover. Ooh, hitting the floor hard. Was Marquise Kindell. Check into the game now, Adonis Melvins Jr. Our director, Paul Tanacelli, is going to replay that block. Oh, it is a beauty. With authority, that rejection. Oh, Ram and Paul basketball, 12 23 remaining in the first half. Ramapo with a two-point lead. Battle. McWilliams being pressured by Moore. McWilliams and Moore, an intense matchup so far. McWilliams, his shot, bothered by Moore, won't fall. Good ball movement by NJCU. From the opposite corner, three. Count it! Jameek Moore from the corner. Fans saying, give me some more of Jameek. We'll take the three and the one-point lead, 16 to 15. Oh, 
Excellent defense by NJCU as they're manning up from the corner. 20-footer, no good. Amazing. Tariq Holmes drives. He's fouled on the play. Acrobatic move to the basket. Hits the deck. Foul on the play. And Holmes will go. Denzel Banks, I'm sorry. It was Banks that was fouled in the play. My bad. He'll go to the free throw line. For two shots. Misses the first. Checking back into the game is Sam Tony. Replacing Jameer Calhoun. Second shot for Denzel Banks. Two-point lead now for NJCU. They win it, and they're in it, Nina. They win, and they're in. That is the playoff picture as we speak right now with Rowan and Montclair also in the mix, also playing as we speak. We'll try to get you updates from those games as well. Another big block. This time it's number 25, Michael Clement, the six foot six freshman center out of Sicklerville, New Jersey. Sense of urgency has been on fire since the opening tip. Anything is possible. Good hesitation off the glass and in Denzel Banks. 19 to 15, NJCU with the lead. McWilliams, he'll give to Battle. Battle with a nice move. Dishes it off to the corner. That shot missed by Principe. And there was a struggle for a loose ball. Checking back into the game now, number 23, Caton Darling. He replaces Jameek Moore. Inbound in the basketball now, it's Denzel Banks. He gets it to Adonis Melvins, Jr. What, what is it? We got a travel call. Zone. Traveling violation? By Melvins, Jr. Yep. When he Thank caught the pass from Banks, took one too many. Too many steps. Mm -hmm. Going through the motion too quick. <laughs> so a turnover called against NJCU. Nick Williams. Mansfield Warren with the turnaround and he's gonna get fouled on the play. Warren to go to the line, two shots. Makes the first. He makes them both. Warren, two for two. Ramapo now trails by two. Inside to Tony. Cross court pass. Fadeaway jumper. Doesn't hit the mark. Darley on the miss. Mansfield with the reverse finger roll. And it's good. Mansfield Ward with a highlight reel move on that one for Ramapo. All even at 19. 9.30 remaining in the first half. Spirited affair at the J-Mac. Count it. Basket is good. NJCU with a slim two-point lead. McWilliams for Ramapo. Back to Warren for three. 
In and out, no good. Offensive rebound pulled down by Kindell. Warren now controlling. Kindell looks, dishes. Three-pointer is good by Bennett. That's number two, Travis Bennett for Ramapo. Long pass to the corner. Calling an offensive foul against Denzel Banks. Banks does not like the call, Nina, whatsoever. What are your thoughts on that call, Nina? It was a rough call, but... It it's so it tight out there, Nina. Question. There's so little room. Absolutely. So many of these calls, He's I feel like, could go either way. And, you know. I mean, I really, you feel the sense of urgency coming Absolutely. from this bench for NJCU and Coach Brown. The transitions are just 100%, 0 to 100. They just get the ball and go. And they're trying to rush with urgency today. They're going to call an offensive foul against Ramapo. Already up to 16 fouls for Ramapo. 8.36, 8.30, 30 remaining. Five team fouls for NJCU. NJCU now trailing by one. Calhoun passes over to the corner. Three-pointer is good. Jeff Haddock, Jr. NJC regains the lead, now up by two. Warren with the miss. Another foul called on the play. That foul is going to go against Travis Bennett for Ramapo. And since Ramapo is in the penalty with their seventh foul, it'll be a one-on-one -on -one for NJCU. Misses the first. Offensive rebound by Tony. Put back is good. The big body, Tony, showing his strength on that offensive rebound. Gives NJCU the four-point lead. And another foul called against NJCU. Inbounding the basketball now is Warren for Ramapo. Checking back into the game, number 13, Jameek Moore replacing Kate Darley. Big transition, Tariq Holmes dishes it off. Gorgeous reverse basket, Jameek Moore. Increases the NJCU lead. That's gonna be a call against NJCU. Blocking foul against Holmes. That's Tariq Holmes first personal. Check into the game for Ramapo, number 31, Jordan Zagadu. One on one for Mansfield Warren, as NJCU is in the penalty. One plus the penalty makes the first. Both Ramapo and NJCU with 17 fouls apiece. The two-shot penalty comes at 10 fouls. And we want to thank you once again, everybody, for joining us here at the JMAC. Big, big end of this season game, last game of the season for NJCU. They win, and they're in the playoffs here on senior night from the JMAC. Loose ball, scramble on the floor. They're going to call a jump ball with a possession arrow in favor of Ramapo. The 
referee is talking things over with Marquise Kindell. Back in the front court now for Ramapo. Mick Williams looking, moving from his left to right. Finds Warren. Warren moving from his right to left. Warren pulls up back to Mick Williams. Now to Warren. Warren with the left hand. Pull up jumper. In and out, no good. It's like a volleyball match out there. Off the hand of the Ramapo player, Warren. He steps on the line. That should be NJCU basketball. And it is. Jameek Moore to inbound the ball for NJCU. 6.55 remaining in the first half. Such a tight game, Nina. I think so much of this is going to come down to, as you said, an overtime of the women's game. Who wants it more? Absolutely. <laughs> Three-pointers good. Beautiful. Speaking of wanting it more, Jeff Haddock Jr. with another three. For NJCU with a 31-24 lead. Answering right back is Jason Battle. 31-26, toe-to-toe, head-to-head. Back and forth we go. 6-15 remaining in the first half. 31-26 lead. That shot is no good by Jameek Moore. Battle over to Warren. Warren now for Ramapo. He's deed up by Haddock Jr. It's been a fun matchup to watch. Haddock versus Warren. Battle, pull up, jumper, 25 footer, no good. Tony with a rebound. Tony, the senior, honor before the game. Big steal by Battle, and the lay in is good. Jason Battle with a big heads up anticipatory play there. A steal doesn't get any prettier than that. But answering right back, it's Jameek Moore. 33 to 28. NJCU with a lead. 5-15 remaining in the first half. Mick Williams driving. Now moving right to left. Gets it to Warren. Clock, shot clock winding down. Warren gives it up for the lay-in. No good. That was Zagadu who missed it. Oh, big head fake. He bit. Three-pointer. No good. And that's going to go out of bounds. <laughs> Catch your breath, Nina. End-to-end -end action with a foul number 13. called. And who was that on? Number 13. Our senior, Jameek Moore. Jameek Moore with the personal foul on the play. So will they be able to keep this pace up, Absolutely. Nina? I have no doubt they will. On the line now to shoot Marquise Kindell. I want... For Ramapo, one and one, he makes the first. Kindell with the second of the one and one. And he makes the second. That was Marquise Kindell, and now checking into the game for Ramapo, number two, Travis Bennett. And we have an update, Camden 54, Montclair State 51. Camden led 48 to 34 at the half. If Camden loses, we are in here at NJCU. That's regardless As of Montclair we State, we have to win. Montclair State is the big favorite in that Camden game. Offensive rebound. The putback is good. Jameek Moore with a huge basket. NJCU now up by 5 4 10 remain in the opening half. Double dribble. That's going to be a double dribble turnover by Ramapo. 
NJCU basketball. And this just in, Rowan 61, Kane 43 as expected. Rowan with the big lead in that one. Three spots remain for the playoffs. NJCU wins, they're in. Camden beats Montclair. NJCU is in. Nina, please tell me I'm right about that. And if, K- and if Kane beat Rowan, we'll, we, I want to get clarification on that from Ira. Uh, we'll, we'll do that at halftime. We'll get final scores for you as well. NJCU up by five. Good look inside. Strong move. Basket no good. Rebound McWilliams. Gorgeous outlet pass. Fouled on the play was number 31, Jordan. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was Jordan Zagadu. Foul's going to be on. I believe that foul was called against Calhoun. I agree with you. And now checking into the game. Checking back into the game. Or waiting to check into the game. As Zagadu will go to the free throw line. A one and one. All right, I guess it's two shots. It was a shooting foul. Checking into the game now for NJCU is Michael Clement. One more shot for Zagadu. He makes it. Timeout. Substitution for Ramapo. As NJCU is holding on to a three-point lead. 3.30 to go in the first half. Tariq Holmes dishes it out to three-point land, and it's good. Paddock Jr. again with another huge three. Keep feeding it to Haddock, I say, Nita. Romano, he'll give to McWilliams. Back to battle, battle between the legs. Loses control, pressured by Melvins Jr., Shot clock winding down. Stolen. Gorgeous move. He's fouled. Count the basket. Tariq Holmes. And one opportunity for a three-point play for Tariq Holmes. I have the uh, NJCU men's basketball scenario. All right, tell us, Nina. It all comes down to tonight. If NJCU can defeat third place Ramapo, at home tonight, they clinch the playoff berth. But if they lose, and Montclair State loses to Rutgers Camden, Completing the three-point play, Tariq Holmes. Go ahead. This is so important. If NJCU loses and Montclair State loses to Rutgers Camden, or Rowan loses to Kane, NJCU will also clinch. Yeah, will also clinch. So that score is shocking out of uh, Camden. I don't know if that's a final. 54 54- to 51, Camden had the lead over Montclair State, which nobody would have predicted. That's a nice little head fake and move. He's going to be fouled on the play. Kate Darley. I'm going to double check, but that might be the end. Score Is of the that game. the final? Uh, our game started a little late because of the. Oh, that's right, because of the overtime. And listen, you guys want to know what a graduate student has to deal with? This four, do you mind if I tell them your GPA? No, go ahead. 4.0, huge ups, huge props to Nina Carbonero with the 4.0. And that was in the fall semester? Yep. Unbelievable. And you've been here since 7 a.m. Yes. This is a hardworking (laughs) girl right here, everybody. Woman, I should say. Put back offensive rebound is good. Michael Clement. That's the second half score. MSU is in the lead. 57. How much time left? Second half. We got the second half. We got about Montclair 11. State now with the with the one point lead over Camden. 
Does it say how much time's remaining? 11.15? Yes, sir. Wow, that's a tight one. So Camden upsets Montclair. We're in. Right, but we got a game here at the J-Mac. got to love a good upset. McWilliams on the line for Ramapo. They're in the double penalty now. McWilliams, 6'2", senior guard out of Blauvelt, New York. Attended Tappan Zee High School. Rockland County. Shout out Rockland County. Good ball movement around the arc. Haddock, Jr., looking to look, throw up another three. I'd like to see it. Absolutely. He is just having tremendous luck from that spot. Absolutely. Luck or hard work. I don't know which one it is, but <laughs> it's, it's working for him. Hey, tonight. it's working for him. And that is all Good that pass on the for. inside with the left hand. It's Marquise Kindell. Gorgeous move by Marquise. Coming right back at you from three-point land. Shot, no good, Haddock. Will stay the same way. And that ball stolen by Battle. Battle with a pull-up jumper, no good. Knocking it out of bounds, almost coming down with the rebound was Kate Darley, the six-foot-three sophomore out of West New York, New Jersey, 6'3". 185, battled inbound for Ramapo. Long range three. Gorgeous shot by Bennett. 43 to 40 as we're under a minute to go. Man, that first half flew by. Absolutely. Now we got a two on one, a give and go. Oh, great defense. Getting back on D and breaking up the two on one. That was Holmes, I believe, that broke that up. Yes, it was. Bennett, no good. 15 seconds to go in the first half. Jameek Moore will slow things down. Another one of our seniors honored before the game here on senior night of the J-Mac. Moore, long range three, no good at the buzzer. Woo! He was aiming high. <laughs> Hold on to your hats in this one. NJCU 43, Ramapo 40. And do I say the J Mac or is it yep, just J Mac? You say the J Mac. What do the, the what, J -Mac, what do the kids the say? No, we the N Jack. The and you say it's not just J. It's the J Mac. All right. So the score at the half from the J Mac. NJCU 43, Ramapo 40. We got a barn burner. First half was really just a run and gun show, lots of threes, but you got to be happy with this all everything game coming down to the final game of the season for the Gothic Knights. They win, they're in Nina, and they came to play in the first half. What are your thoughts so far? Absolutely. I mean, you got to love the position they're in, you got to appreciate it and cherish that because sort of embrace to, it, right? Yeah, to have your senior night be that, that make it or break it season game, that's something special. And you were so good at spelling out the playoff picture. So the three teams that are still in the hunt for only two positions, NJCU, Rowan, and Montclair. Montclair playing heavily favored playing Camden tonight, and Rowan obviously heavy, heavily favored against Kane. Do we have an update on the Montclair-Camden game? Take your time. But if Montclair, if Camden upsets Montclair, NJCU in. We've got a tie game. At, uh, no, 9:21 remaining. 57-57. Montclair and Rutgers Camden. That is unbelievable. We will continue to give you updates from the Montclair Camden game. I believe the Rowan Kane game. I think that's in the books with uh, Rowan had a very healthy lead against Kane. And getting back to uh, senior night, Nina, it was nice to see some of our seniors. Oh, yeah, blowout, blowout for Rowan, up 
78 to 57. So they should obviously hang on with about five minutes left in that one. But you got to love, you know, seeing the families out here tonight, the flowers, the balloons, yeah. and the gorgeous, huge framed pictures yeah. that our seniors receive tonight. And let's talk a little bit about Jeff Haddock Jr., other than his awesome performance in the first half. Jameek Moore standing out also in the first half. But you've been through this as a senior and as a student athlete. I mean, you were a senior, graduated last May. Um, it's hard not to reflect you know, Absolutely. at times like this, I mean, to see the families and how proud they are. Um, you being a student athlete, I know you had some trouble with your <laughs> designated senior night due to some weather issues or something yeah. like that. But uh, you having just graduated in May, I mean, you're still here, so you're still a student. But do you ever go through that like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how quickly it's all gone by? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was, it's been amazing. I transferred here uh, back in 2017. I went to Keystone College. Okay. Uh, some of my teammates are watching this right now. Oh, very cool. <laughs> what up, <Absolutely>. Keystone? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I came here two years ago and never looked back. They've That's treated so me cool. so well here. I've enjoyed my time. It's nice being closer to home. Um, right. But... You know, one guy, you know, again, I've heard a lot about, and I haven't had an opportunity to get to know him as I'm, I'm new to the school, but uh, Sam Tony is one guy that stands out. I know he's had he had his challenges as a youth and growing up. And Are you familiar at all with Sam Tony's story? A little bit, not too much. You um, know, I know he had been sort of in and out of foster homes and overcame so many obstacles mm -hmm. to get to this point, and it's got to be uh, – bittersweet for him to be moving on mm -hmm. hopefully we get the win tonight and with some help uh otherwise we'll also have a playoff game but uh, i've just heard incredible things about him and being here a student at about the same time i was wondering if you could maybe share something about the men's team and any of our three seniors tonight haddock more or Tony? I mean, I understood Tony mm -hmm. overcame so many obstacles. No, didn't absolutely. start playing until he, I think he was 23 yep. or something like that. So um, I know he's been a, the face of the program, just outstanding. He's came here. He's done so much for the program, for everything, for himself. Uh, and to see him play on his senior night and to be to be in this situation, to have that chance to go back to the the playoff berth, it's, it's a great thing to see for him. Um, I don't know uh, Jameek Moore too well because right. it's his first season, but so far watching him play uh, from the scrimmage at St. Peter's earlier in the season, yeah, just amazing. Just straight out of the gate, you were like, who is this player? Right, right. He is immediately it's just he stands making out. a difference. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he is 6'5", uh, so he stands out, you know, yeah. in general. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, no, he made a huge difference. Um, and S Jeff – Absolutely. He is a huge piece of the culture at NJCU outside of the basketball court. Like, uh, he is a SAC representative. Oh, really? He, yep. Uh, I'm a former SAC representative Very myself. cool. Uh, Very cool. He is a residence life advisor, um, and he just does so much on and off the court. It's nice to see him sinking some deep threes on Absolutely. his senior night and just being able to contribute like this. And you had referenced something earlier about this sort of motto or mantra during the women's game. Can you repeat that for us Lift again? Lift as you rise. Lift as you rise. I love that NJCU saying, and uh, we've, it's really been a treat to have you here tonight with us, Nina. Um, did you want to quickly go over some of the, the stats from the first half, if you'd like to do the honors? Is, that, is this from the first half? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. So we're up by three. To, uh, leading scorers. For Ramapo, leading the way with 12 points was Marquise Kindell. You know what I don't know? Is it Kindell or Kindle? We'll have to find that out. We only had 20 minutes between games, so uh, Absolutely. Our women's game there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, not a lot, whole lot of time to no reset. Time today. <laughs> exactly. And uh, also for Ramapo, with eight points, Travis, Travis Bennett, Bennett and then six points, Jason Battle. Four points for Zagadu. Six points for Mainsfield Warren uh, from three-point land. Two or three for Travis, Travis Bennett. And anybody in any kind of foul trouble? Let's check that out. Two fouls for Zagadu. Two for Romano. Two for Bennett. So they're in pretty good shape. And how about for us? For 
leading scorers. For us, so. we've got, uh, I see, two. Who uh, else but Mr. Three tonight? There, absolutely. Haddock Jr. with Four 12 points. Three point line. Oh, but 13 for Jameek Moore. 13 for 13. <laughs> That's it. Lucky 13, at least in the first half. And then rounding out our top scorers, uh, five points for Denzel Banks. Four, five points for Tariq Holmes. We already mentioned that. Four for Sam Tony. And how about from three-point land? Four of 70 Absolutely. took seven three-pointers. That is unbelievable for Haddock. Made four of seven. And that's really been, that. that's that's the story there. That's, that's our game changer, 43 to 40. Without a doubt. We'll see if they can maintain that. Nina in the second half. I mean, this has really been a run and gun. I wonder if Coach Brown, if he's smart, if Camden does pull off the upset, mm -hmm. he shouldn't say anything. He shouldn't let the guys know because this was a later yeah. start tonight. Because mm -hmm. then they might lose their uh, their motivation. Yeah, they won't. Um, but let's see. Do we have an update on that Camden Montclair game? See if, uh, let's see if our Rutgers Newark buddy. Hey, hey Tom, <laughs> Tom, we got an update on the Camden Montclair game. We're trying to get a real time score from Montclair State Camden. Once again, for those just joining us, Montclair, NJCU, and Rowan, three teams. Sixty-four, sixty-two. Montclair up by two with about six minutes to go. Oh my goodness! Unbelievable. Well, we'll keep you posted on that one. Uh, Nina, please stick around for. Uh, I know you've been here since seven a.m. Is that I'll right? What were around. you doing I'll here at around. seven a.m.? Uh, I come in the morning and I do some homework or work out before my eight thirty a.m. class. Hey girl, you are on fire. <laughs> I have class from 8.30 to 11 usually every morning. Okay. Is and that then, five uh, days a week? No, three days a week. Okay. And then, uh, I've been preparing for the senior games today. Unbelievable. Those nice little picture frames I put together. That is terrific. Oh, you, did you do those? Well, Ira over here did all the, uh, did all the hard work. Okay. They were the gorgeous. Really in. great looking <laughs> photos. Mm -hmm. um, so cool. Well, we appreciate all your hard work, truly. <laughs> um, why don't we take a brief time out, reset, and get ready for the start of the second half here from the J-Mac live. <laughs> NJC with a 43-40 lead over Ramapo. Second half action coming up in just about six minutes. Fernita Carbonero on John Heffernan. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back to the J-Mac. Fans, did you know that NJCU hashtag Gothic Vision now has its own app? It's true. If you have an iPhone, go to the App Store and download the NJCU Gothic Vision app today. It's free. Watch all home games that you cannot attend live on your mobile device. 
And if you miss it live or just want to see it again, go back and watch on demand. All of this available right now. Hashtag Gothic Vision. Get the app today. And fans, NJCU has brand new logos and brand and a brand new identity, which means you could use some brand new apparel in your life. Log on to the NJCU Athletic Store and pick up your new apparel. T-shirts, polos, jackets, pullovers, pants, hats, socks, gloves, and more. Get your gothic gear online by visiting njcugothicnights.com slash store. And are you a subscriber to the Gothic Knights on YouTube? Well, if you're not, you should be. Log on to YouTube.com slash NJCU Gothic Knights and subscribe today. And you better be following the Gothic Knights on Instagram on your mobile device. Follow at NJCU Gothic Knights to catch all the action for all our teams. Learn about upcoming events, award winners, news, or just see great video and photo content plus team takeovers on IG Stories. Follow the NGCU Gothic Knights on Instagram today. And for the most current NJC news in real time, follow the Gothic Knights on Twitter. The handle, NJCU Athletics. Follow NJCU on Twitter today. We are hashtag Jersey City's team. Fans for in-depth coverage coverage of all NJCU athletic teams, please go to NJCUGothicKnights.com, the official website of NJCU athletics. On the site, you can find news, statistics, highlight videos, photo galleries, and all other information pertaining to the Gothic Knights. Visit NJCUGothicKnights.com. Today, we are Jersey City's team. And we're back here at the J-Mac. Second half action just about to get going. NJC with a 43-40 lead over visiting Ramapo. NJCU wins, and they're in. Stockton beat Rutgers Newark on the road at Stockton today as far as conference play is concerned. That means no home playoff games for Rutgers Newark. Also, in the final moments, Camden, Rutgers Camden taking on Montclair State. We will give you a final when we get it from that one. If Rutgers Camden upsets Montclair State, NJCU is automatically in. And Rowan with a big lead over Kane in the other conference game today with playoff implications. But we've got a heck of a ball game right here at the J-Mac, 43-40. to NJCU with the lead as we are about to get things started here in the second half. Possession arrow in favor of the Gothic Knights. Bounding the basketball, Haddock Jr., four of seven from three-point land in the first half. Look for more of that out of Haddock here in the second half. 
Jameek Moore gets it over to Calhoun, who hits the jumper. 45 to 40 now, and JC with the lead. Battle for Ramapo with the left hand through the legs. Turnaround, excellent defense by Moore. Kicked out for three. It's good. Connor Romano for Ramapo. 6'2 senior out of Old Bridge, New Jersey with a big three to get Ramapo right back in it in the opening moments of the second half. And JCU up by two. That's a two-pointer, no good. Haddock with the miss for the Gothic Knights. Coming right back down the floor, it's Romano. Romano to battle to the other corner. That shot by McWilliams, way off. Rebound by Kindell. His putback, no good, but he's fouled on the play. And if you're just joining us, with the color commentary tonight, my tag team partner, Nina Carbonero. Nina, so good to have you here. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here. As Kindell hits the first of his two free throws. And Ramapo ties it up at 45. Nina, if you get an update from the Camden Montclair game, let us know. Absolutely, I'll check that out right now. Awesome. Three pointer. Oh, chest in and out. More with the miss for the Gothic Knights. Battle now. He looks to Zagadou. Zagadou tries to feed it inside, but it's broken up. Good defense, pushed up the floor. More floor, miss. McWilliams now back the other way for Ramapo. He'll slow it down, give it up to Romano. Connor Romano. Looks inside to Zagadou. Zagadou deed up nicely, but fouled by Haddock. Count the basket. All right, so I've got a Montclair State University 73, Rutgers Camden 68 with under MC. Oh, man, Montclair State pulling away just a little bit with under a minute to go. Montclair State law loses this that game. NJCU automatically in. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. And Zagadou completes the three-point play for the Roadrunners. Ramapo now up by three. Tony. Back to Banks. Banks misses. Battle, I mean, for a pint-sized guy at 5'7", he has so much speed and quickness. He finds space out there when you don't think it even exists. Jason Battle, sophomore guard out of Jersey City. Generously listed at 5'7", I might add. <laughs> and I don't mean that disparagingly. It's just more credit to him for what he's able to accomplish out there on the floor. Great all-around player in battle. Three-pointer, good. Answering right back. Sam Tony. Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. Mr. Everything, senior Sam Tony. So well-liked by everyone here at the NJCU community. In the NJCU community. Battle swatted away. Oh, gorgeous pass. And the foul. Tyreek Holmes with the pass. Unable to convert was Banks, but he was hammered on the play. 
So Banks will go to the line and shoot two. All even at 48. Such a nice pass, Nita, from Tariq Holmes. Absolutely. So two shots for Banks. So tell us more about your front. What is it? Keyport? Keyport Keystone. State? Oh, Keystone. Keystone I'm sorry. Where is Keystone? Uh, it's right outside Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, very small school. Keystone, about how many kids? Uh, I want to say my class might have been like 300 kids. Wow. So wait, you went to Keystone before you went here? Yep. Uh, I played soccer there my freshman and sophomore oh, year. Oh, I gotcha. I transferred over here my junior year. Very cool. So these girls are all still undergrads? Yep. Good for uh, them. No, actually, the one who's tuning in right now, uh, she is a graduate student also at uh, Philly oh, U Science. Gotcha. Very cool. So do you get to visit at all? I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. Mm -hmm. We got a timeout on the floor, I believe. Um, I'm, my jump bad. Jump ball, jump ball. Jump ball. Good call, Nina. I know so. some things from my time. <laughs> Nick Williams <laughs> accepts the inbound pass. His turnaround jumper is in and out. No good. Offensive rebound. Count the basket and the foul. Jordan Zagadu. And I got to tell you, that is a handful. The senior Zagadu, 6'6", out of Newark, New Jersey. Such a strong player. Count the basket. Opportunity for a three-point play right now. Zagadu looking to convert one shot to break the 50-50 tie. And he misses and misses badly as he grins walking down the court as the fans are all over him for that one. They're calling air ball, but I think it got a piece of the rim, didn't it? <laughs> it might have, it might have. I think it, I think it got a little piece of the rim. Fans don't care. Offensive foul now called against Holmes for NJCU, against NJCU. And did they just take a point off the board? <laughs> <laughs> update on our MSU Ramapo. Uh, we, do we have Walker a final? Standard. No, we have uh, 29 seconds left and MSU leads by three. No way. And that basket by Ramapo's Kindell is good, so it's 52 to 50 now, Ramapo with the lead. All right, so remind us one more time, Nina. We Montclair have, State up by three yes, against Camden? Yes, so 29 Rutgers Camden. seconds left. 29 seconds? Oh my gosh. That's going to be a foul against NJCU. That's four team fouls for NJCU. Slowing it down now, Warren. Nick Williams over to Romano. Nick Williams for three. No good. Rebound. Banks. Banks gets it up the floor quick, quickly, taking it himself with his shot blocked was Tariq Holmes. Checking to the game now for the Gothic Knights. Number 10. Who do we check in? It's hard to see. Warren now for Ramapo with the right hand. He gets fouled on the play. to the free throw line for the road runners. He makes the first. Ramapo.
with a three-point lead. Looking to add to that. Mansfield Warren hits the second. Got them both. 54 to 50. That was Kyrie Myers that checked into the game for NJCU. Myers now with a basketball three-pointer. No good. Myers with an aggressive dive. Looking to get that offensive rebound, but to no avail. As Warren once again controls with a left hand down the lane with a nice bullet pass. Nagadu on Zagadu unable to control the pass from Warren, and it was a beauty. Myers will bring the ball up now. 5'11", a freshman out of Glassboro, New Jersey. Kyrie Myers for the Gothic Knights with a right hand. Looking to set the screen was Tony. Denzel Banks will take over. Zagadu D's him up, alters the shot. Check into the game now for the Gothic Knights. Tariq Holmes and Caton Darley. I believe it was Darley that checked in, number 23. We've got a final score for the we got a going baseline as Romano with a right hand gets his own rebound, follows it up, no good. Losing the handle was Mansfield Warren out of bounds, but it will stay the same way. Ramapo basketball. Oh, and we have a final, Nina. Share it with our viewers, if you would, please. We've got Montclair State, 75, Rutgers, Camden, 72. Oh, uh, so again, that's one scenario for NJCU that has gone south. Camden ends up losing a close one to Montclair State. Mansfield Warren, strong drive to the basket with the right hand. He's going to get offensive foul called against Warren. And check into the game now for the Gothic Knights, number 25, Michael Clement. Clement, the 6'6". Freshman center out of Sicklerville, New York. Attended Winslow Township High School. That shot, no good. But the follow up in a strong offensive rebound by Jameek Moore. Count the basket, NJC within two. Three point attempt now on the other side. No good. That was Travis Bennett. Bennett with a gorgeous pass underneath to Marquise Kindell. Good look by Bennett. And another turnover. And JCU's got to slow things down, take a deep breath, D it up here, and try to get things back on track as Romano gives to Bennett. Bennett loses the handle. Warren now, pull up jumper, no good. Big battle underneath. Trying to keep it in bounds, but right to the Ramapo player. Bennett puts it in for Ramapo. Ramapo now with a six point lead as there's a timeout on the floor. And fans, NJCU is a proud founding member of the New Jersey Athletic Conference since 1957. The NJAC has been one of the leading conferences in NCAA Division III, winning a combined 63 NCAA National Team Championships. Follow the 10 teams of the NJAC and its affiliate members online at NJACS. NJACSports.com. And on Instagram and Twitter, that handle is at NJAC Sports. And fans, the 2020 NJCU Athletics Hall of Fame class has been announced. 
And the induction will be on Friday, February 28th. Congratulations to Jennifer Ubuha. Jennifer Abuha. Oh, Abuha. Thank you, then, Nina, uh, from women's soccer. Yep. Well, we got, we will circle back to Jennifer in just a second. I want to hear more about her, but we are back underway after that timeout. 12 minutes to go in the game. Long three. That shot. No good by Darley. Back on the other end. Put back. Layup. Good. Quick transition. And the basket for Jordan Zagadu. Tariq Holmes. Over to Darley. Darley in the corner. To Haddock. Haddock back to Darley. Darley looks. Good look inside. There's going to be a reach in foul against Ramapo. And that foul is going to go against Marquise Kindell. NJCU basketball and bounding the ball to Reek Holmes. As the Gothic Knights look to get set. And the ball now to Michael Clement. Daniel Banks looks inside to Moore. Moore back to Banks, working the ball around. Banks now with a drive. That shot no good. Mansfield Warren will take it up for Ramapo. 11 minutes now to go to the game. Ramapo with the 60 to 52 lead. Looking to get back into the game at the scorer's table. Sam Tony. Mansfield Warren. Zagadu from the corner. Fall away jumper, no good. Offensive rebound by Travis Bennett. His shot's blocked and out of bounds. And now check into the game, Sam Tony for the Gothic Knights. It remains Roadrunners basketball as Mansfield Warren will inbound the ball for Ramapo. Uh, check that Romano will inbound the ball. Connor Romano. He finds Bennett. Knocking that foul out of bounds. Denzel Banks playing close D for the Gothic Knights. Romano once again inbounds, gets it to Warren. Warren around the circle. Bennett. Gives to Kindell. That's going to be an offensive foul called against Travis Bennett. Jersey City basketball. So uh, interesting fact on uh, Michael Clement in today's game. He's played nine minutes, has two points, but he has averaged three blocks. Get out of here. Huge physical presence, big body. Absolutely. As a freshman, amazing. Very, amazing certainly, ability. there's a good example of making use of his time, his playing time tonight. We could playing use a little bit more of Bennett Absolutely. right now. Good backdoor look with the reverse. And that was Michael Clement. Clement, speaking of which, you've got a knack for that, Nina. <laughs> that was a gorgeous basket by the freshman. And it's, it's Clement? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. He's Brings NJCU within six just... points. So he's gotten off to a good start. I mean, well, we're at the end of the season, Absolutely. but for a freshman. Mm -hmm. He's definitely made his mark on this program. That's so good to hear. And obviously another key cog to the future of this program. Oh, getting back to your Hall of Fame friend. Oh, absolutely. Um, so her name is Jennifer Abuha. Abuha from Women's Soccer. Yes. So did you have an opportunity to play um, with her I or watch played, her? I've played with her a few times. I've watched her. Um, she's another close friend of our assistant coach, Katie Fian, who I'm a big fan of, close friend. Um, but another name you'll read down here a couple after is the late, great Julia Caceres of Women's oh, Soccer. Um, she was an NJC women's soccer legend. She's really? an icon for our sport. So going to be awarded, inducted posthumously. She unfortunately um, 
passed away. She lost the battle of cancer. Oh, man, I am so year. sorry to hear that. Um, well, please, everyone who can go, go. It's going to be Friday, February 28th, and we'll have more details on that absolutely. a little bit later in the broadcast. And that was a gorgeous shot by Marquise Kindell. But right back towards the other end, and a big block by Zagadu. So we're under 10 minutes to go, just about 9.35 remaining in the game. Romano kicks it out to Zagadu. Zagadu misses for Ramapo. And Banks oh with an acrobatic move. He cannot convert. Things are getting physical. Three-pointer. It's good. Denzel Banks falling on his behind is able to get the tray to bring NJCU back within six. Back within five, excuse me. And it's going to be Gothic Knights basketball. A little momentum shift here, Nina. Absolutely, I love it. Tariq Holmes controls. He's being deed up by battle, but we're backing, looking inside for Tony. That's going to be knocked out of bounds by Ramapo. NJCU basketball, 8.37 remaining. Ramapo with a five point lead, inbound to Tony. Moore now for three. No good. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by Michael Clement. Ramapo ball. McWilliams looks inside. Beautiful pass from McWilliams to Kindle. Great assist by McWilliams there. Long range three. Count the basket. Three pointer. Sam. Tony. Sixty-four to sixty now Ramapo with the four-point lead as Jason Battle gives it to Zagadu. Zagadu to Battle. Battle looks for a streaking Zagadu, but keeps it himself. He's deed up in the paint, kicks it out for the three, not doing it. Back on the other end of the floor. Count the basket to Jamaica Moore. NJCU clawing their way back. Full time out on the floor. NJCU now within two. 64 to 62 with 728 to play. <laughs> Woo! Women's game. I, would it, how fitting would this be if we go to overtime? By the way, this is my student credo. Obviously, if you've worked it tonight, I know you're, you've been at it all day. If you, if you have to take a break or a breather, and I know you said you'd want, you were thinking about going home after the first game, we'd love you to stay, but I understand if, you know, no other things call. Not to put any pressure on you, Nina. No, I mean, I can't go now. <laughs> there you We've go. We've got a good game on That's our right. That's right. So let's get back to that Hall of Fame um, dinner. Julia Catherine. So um, it's Jennifer Christian Acuna from men's soccer, the late great Julia Kasser, Kasseris from women's soccer, who lost a, mm -hmm. a tough battle to cancer. And how long ago was that? Um, recently, about. Uh, I want to say this past April. Oh my God! Um, so really recently. Yes. Uh, wow. She, she was. That like is said, really tough. A legend for women's soccer. She paved the way for everyone here. Really. She was just an icon. She was also an, uh, a Piscataway police officer. No and, way. Uh, 
She was a coach for the Parma Soccer Club, who okay. I played for since I was since I was young. Oh, she man. was just an icon. Highly all respected over. woman Absolutely. and a great athlete. Man, well, I'm glad they'll be great able to person. honor her. And it's Absolutely. obviously it had a big, huge, profound impact on the whole NJCU family and obviously the community here as well. So certainly um, she will be remembered. And um, I'm glad you shared that with us here tonight, Nina. Absolutely. There's just, you know, some people who came here and been a part of the program that have just paved the way for success and, you know, for more young girls to play college soccer and things like that. Totally. Absolute beast on the field. I don't really? have her stats in front of me, but really? she's amazing. Unbelievable. Man. And then so Jennifer sad Abuha, to hear that. You do not want to be in goal when she shoots. <laughs> really? She has power behind her kick. We'll get to the remainder of the Hall of Fame induction class in just a moment. But NJCU on the turnover, pressing, driving to the basket with the floater. They're going to call a blocking foul against Mansfield Warren for Ramapo. So on the line to shoot two and an opportunity to tie things up is number two Denzel Banks, the junior. Guard out of Newark, New Jersey. Right now he's shooting a three for five from the free throw line. Okay. 75%. 75%, three for five on the night. And the Banks makes one of two. And we've got a 30 second timeout on the floor. One point game, Ramapo with the 64 to 63 lead. So, Nina, let's see who else is on the list. Volleyball coach Christopher Feliciano. Again, we're referencing the 2020 NJCU Athletics Hall of Fame class. The induction is Friday, February 28th. In addition to who we've mentioned, Veterans Committee honoree Bob Johnson. Mm -hmm. Men's basketball great Jeffrey L. Jordan. He's actually in the house here tonight. Is he really? He, uh, he was also uh, part of our senior ceremony. The, uh, oh, okay. ADA, yep. Okay, Absolutely. and, and uh, that's guy. terrific. And part of his participation mm -hmm. tonight was? He was there uh, to commemorate the seniors and give them their Terrific. their frames and things like right. that. This class is just such a, it's a, it's a very special one to me, right. especially because then we have, a, as you go down our little list, we have here Coach Frank Parisi. Who bowling is, uh, coach. He's our newly hired men's bowling coach. Oh, that's awesome. Or, and, but already in the Hall of guy. Fame. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, the 85-86 men's basketball team and the 2003-2004 women's bowling team. Mm -hmm. They, ladies and gentlemen, are your 2020 Hall of Fame class. Big turnover, going back the other end. Zagadu with a jam. Mark Brown incensed and irate with no call on that play. As Zagadu with a thundering dunk for the Roadrunners. And folks, just getting back to that uh, Hall of Fame dinner, you can buy your tickets and RSVP today by logging on to njcugothicnights.com slash 2020 hall tickets. So thanks for that, and thank you for the background, Absolutely. Nina, on all those uh, very, very uh, highly praised and highly respected athletes here from NJCU. Sam Tony now with the ball. NJCU trailing by three, 6.30 remaining in the game. Kicking it back out to three-point land. Holmes, three-pointer no good. Oh. Falling down on his back, Jameek Moore going for the rebound. Looked like he was pushed down, and that he was backing into Jameek Moore. was the Ramapo player. Ramore will go to the line to shoot two. 
It's actually a one plus one. Ramapo with their seventh foul. It'll be a one and one. Seventh team foul. And Moore makes the first. NJCU now within two. Second of the one on one. This will be the second shot. And he makes it. Jamique Moore, perfect. Money, money more. Jason Battle, 5 7 guard for Ramapo. Kindell now to McWilliams. Rob McWilliams goes baseline, falling out of bounds. Tries to get the ball to a teammate, but to no avail. Moore again with a gorgeous no look pass on the inside to number 15, Jameer Calhoun. NJCU takes the one point lead with 5.40 to go. They win, they're in. Battle with a left hand. Looks inside as Zagadu. But get it, they get it in before the shot clock expires. And a sweet little dish from Battle to Zagadu. Battle just creates, creates, creates. So artistic with his playmaking abilities for the Roadrunners. Fade away by Tony. Gorgeous. Sam, Tony, giving NJCU the one-point lead, 69 to 68, 445 to go. Battle now with a right hand. He's doubled up. Traveling violation called against Battle. NJCU basketball. Timeout, NJCU. Woo, 69 to 68. I don't know if I can take this, Nina. We've got a good game today. How apropos would it be, or how fitting would it be? I better not, <laughs> better not jinx anything. But could you imagine another overtime game and our oh. six o'clock tip off for the women's game? That game didn't end until what, nearly nine, nine o'clock? No, nine o'clock. Unbelievable. Or you know, the men's game started around. The men's game started, I want to say around like 9.30. Wow. So we are earning our keep here tonight, Nina. Absolutely. That is for sure. Oh, man. Well. Usually the, the J-Mac is closed by now. Really? Shut down? Lights out? 10 o'clock. Really? Mm -hmm. Burning the midnight oil at the J-Mac Absolutely. tonight. Packed house. Lots of energy in the building. Another one point game back and forth as the women's game went down to the wire at the six o'clock tip off as they beat Ramapo in overtime so what I was going to say is could we could you imagine another overtime here tonight We're, we'll, we'll be here till you know I mean who knows we'll be here till tomorrow we'll have to you know we'll have to have somebody uh, buy everybody grilled cheeses from the diner around the corner <laughs> <laughs> for some for some energy. Well, I'm we got the right. concession stand, too. I'm all right with an overtime, as long as we end up with the win. <laughs> That's exactly. Exactly. Not how long it takes, we're here for it. That's it. Showing her NJCU Gothic Knights pride. Nina Carbonero, our guest color commentator tonight here at the JMAC. Foul on the play before the shot. Jimmy Moore was fouled. It's going to be a one and one for Jimmy Moore. Right back to the line, number 13. And he makes the first of the one and one. A 
one shot for Moore. And he gets them both. 71-68. Three-point NJCU lead. McWilliams controlling, moving to his right for Ramapo. He'll give it to Romano. Romano with a hesitation. Pulls it back. Romano drives again. Throws a shoulder into Jameek Moore. And I think Mark Brown has a good argument on that one. Clearly looked like an offensive foul. But not to be. As Romano will go to the line and shoot the one and one for Ramapo. And he makes the first. We had a uh, guest visitor oh, there behind us. Uh, who's that? I'm not sure. R but Romano, Romano makes the second. One point NJCU lead. And what did what did our visitor have to say? Curious about uh, where you can watch our, our live Oh, cool. That shot's blocked. And uh, thanks to Ira Thor, we have our great gothic vision here at uh, NJCU. I, yeah, and I was giving it when you, uh, I think you took a, a quick break. Mm -hmm. I was pumping up gothic vision. Absolutely. Big time. Long three. More in and out. Romano with a rebound for the Roadrunners. Uh, we've got Shania Robinson over on our camera, too, over there. Oh, good. Please give the shout-outs. What up, Shania? Uh, A gorgeous move time. by McWilliams as he gets back on track. Strong move with the right hand underneath the basket to give Ramapo the one-point lead. And we uh, got to give a special shout-out to our director here, Paul Penfilly, for... Uh, Updating all our camera angles and putting up all these nice... Our uh, technical logos. director tonight. Absolutely. He does a great job. More dishes to Banks. Banks with a gorgeous field goal from Denzel Banks. Beautiful form on that shot. We're 245 to go. Make it 240. And JC with a one-point lead. Driving the lane, McWilliams... Fall away jumper, no good. Follow up not once but twice. You give him that many shots at it, he's going to get it. And that was Kindell with a basket for Ramapo. That basket is good. It was a two-pointer. Timeout, Ramapo. NJCU with a one-point lead. Triple deuce on the board. 2.22 remaining of the game. One point, NJCU lead. So we had like a little wannabe broadcaster. Absolutely. That's not kind of what I call myself. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm just teasing. But yeah, that's cool, man. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Maybe that young man will be uh, be a student here one day at NJCU. It's funny. I was taking a car over here uh, for the game tonight, and this guy says, uh, "Are you a teacher?" <laughs> yeah, he, he had a kind of a heavy. Heavy accent, really sweet guy. And I said, no, 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 I'm not a teacher. I'm, I'm, I'm announcing basketball tonight. Oh, that's very cool. He starts asking me about that. And he goes, one day I want my son to go to NJCU. And I said, hey, absolutely, man. That's what it's here for. Such a diverse city, Jersey City. Did you know Jersey City, the second most diverse city in the nation? And diverse is defined as, um, I think the, the, the parameters for that are, uh, lots of different things, but very multicultural here in Jersey City and such an up-and-coming place and having just moved here myself not too long ago. I love it. Absolutely. So, you know, it's been a pleasure to get to know some of you guys, albeit uh, a little bit, but I'm hoping mm -hmm. that continues. And, Nina, we better see you back here in the booth. Absolutely. At future games. I'll be working uh, every single baseball and softball game. Get out of here so I will see you. What's up? How are you, man? What's your name? What is it? For Quan. Nice to meet you, man. We got a heck of a ball game here, huh? 222 to win. We got a we got a, one of our fans checking in us here at the broadcast table as Battle brings it up to Romano for Ramapo. McWilliams now. McMilliams serves, drives with the right hand. 
Good bounce pass on the inside Great to Marquise Kindell from Rob McWilliams. Gorgeous pass by McWilliams, and McWilliams is really catching on at the right time for Ramapo as they take the one-point lead with 159 remaining in the game. McWilliams has played, has had a hand in the last three Ramapo baskets. And, you know, he got off to a bit of a slow start. But Rob McWilliams, uh, as advertised, senior guard 6'2", out of Blauvelt, New York, Tappan Z. So Coach Mark Brown talking things over with his troops. And, you know, I got to tell you, Nina, you are a student. But for a guy who's been out of the academic world for a while, you, know, you, you got to love the home spun vibe to games here. And we got a huge crowd on senior night. You got fr- fr- we got fans that can come up and say hello, and you know, to me, that's it's, it's inclusive. So, uh, oh, we got our we got our guest back again. What's up? Um, how many points does Denzel Banks is your coach? Denzel Banks have? We're on it. We will find out in two seconds. No, I know. We're, I'm looking up here, right here. So we've got a couple of requests from the audience, from the crowd tonight. Denzel big, Bl- Banks right now has Denzel Banks 15 fan. points. 15 points for Denzel Banks. Two assists. So we are events. about to get underway. Crunch time here at the John J. Moore Athletic Center, NJCU. Trailing Ramapo by a point. Gothic Knights basketball inbounded by Tariq Holmes. Inside to Tony. Tony with a big assist. The jumper is good from Calhoun. Gorgeous looking jump shot from Jameer Calhoun. Gothic Knights retake the lead 78 to 76. McWilliams drives, pull up jumper no good. Big rebound by Jameek Moore as Banks now controlling, almost giving it away. That was Banks, Sam Tony saving the day as he collects that pass that was almost intercepted. Jameek Moore looks inside to Calhoun. Calhoun, Tony now, pull up three, no good. Beautiful setup. And we got a whistle. That's going to be out of bounds. Ramapo basketball. NJCO up by a point. Last minute of play in regulation. Mick Williams. Gives to Kindell, back to Williams. Williams, pull up jumper, no good. Rebound, Tony. Tony on senior night here at the JMAC. Clock winding down. Big basket. Fittingly for Jameek Moore. Three point lead now with 24, 23.7 to go. Remapo with the timeout. NJCU with the three point lead. Unbelievable. (laughs) Unreal. Nina, can we go 2 0 for NJCU on senior night? They win, they're in. The playoffs begin. The crowd is going. Tournament begins on the 22nd. Saturday, that'll be the quarterfinals, semifinals 26th, and the tournament finals for the NJAC on the 29th. We can't have the season end tonight. We got to keep going. And in lots of improbable scenarios tonight, Nina. And we thought we had a shot with Montclair. Camden coming so close to upsetting them tonight, but to know, but that wasn't to be. 
it's Rowan beat Kane. So, like we said from the tip off, it's in NJCU's hands, and they've responded very well. Up by three, 23.7 to go. And we've got our stats ready to go. What a night for basketball. Anything can happen in the NJ. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Romano to inbound for Ramapo. 23.7 to go. He finds Kindle. Now battle Mr. Everything for Ramapo. He's surveying the floor, looking to create crossover. Shut down defensively. What's the call? Oh, they're calling the foul on NJCU. Are you kidding me? Who is, who is that against, Nina? And on the line now, McWilliams for Ramapo. 10.3 to go. It's going to be a one and one for McWilliams. Rob McWilliams makes the first. 79 to 77. Two point Gothic Knights lead. You got to figure Ramapo will foul right away. McWilliams makes it. Timeout Ramapo. And that's got to be, they've got how many left? One left. One timeout remaining for Ramapo. So credit what's, coach Chuck McBreen. What strategy do you think the veteran well, coach is going to go with? Today? Let's see. N NJCU up by one. With possession, they're gonna they're gonna have to foul right away. Mm -hmm. Put the ball on the free throw line for NJCU and take their chances that way. That'll leave them uh, a little bit of time to either get the game tying basket if NJCU misses both because it's a it's a one and one. It'll be a one and one uh, situation. Oh well, no, that would be the tenth foul for Ramapo. So it would be an automatic two shots. They'd be over the limit. It'd be two shots if Ramapo fouls in the backcourt for NJCU. And that would that would do it. And if they make them both. Not necessarily. They'd be up by three. All right. I finally figured it out. So we're going to see a foul right away from Ramapo. They're going to put... NJC on the line, and we'll have to see what happens from there. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Inbounding the ball now, Jamique Moore for NJCU. 10.3 to go. Gothic Knights basketball pressing heavily. Ramapo. Absolutely. Defending Zagadu. And they foul him right away, as I said, doesn't take a Basketball genius to figure that one out. So, Give yourself a little credit over all right. there. Well, thank you, Nina. Thank <laughs> you. I'm giving you tons of credit tonight because you added so much flavor and color to the broadcast with your stories and so cool to have somebody so close to the school. Seriously. So we're do you know we're doing this again. I'll be here all week. <laughs> be sure to tip your color commentator. <laughs> I'll be here all week. But we have had a heck of a night of basketball, Nina. What a treat. Absolutely. As Ramapo immediately fouled to recall uh, Denzel Banks, who will go to the line. And it's going to be a one and one No, no, two shots. Oh, it is a one and one I th thought the referee, I was mistaken. I thought the referee put up two fingers. That would have made sense, though, because Ramapo is only at nine team fouls. 
regardless, NJCU takes the two-point lead. One more shot for Denzel Banks with 7.6 seconds to go. Big free throw right here. Up by three. Banks sinks them both. Huge free throws for Denzel Banks, feeling no pressure at all. At least he didn't show it. <laughs> I think I showed it. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's been absolutely crazy. And give big props to the student section. Absolutely. The shirtless Tony contingent. <laughs> T, capital T-O-N-E-Y, painted on their chests. They got their shirts on their heads. Everybody on their feet here. Nina, this has been so much fun tonight. And let's just hope, fingers crossed, NJCU can hold on to the win. With the three-point lead. And Ramapo all out of timeouts. That is it for them. Nine team fouls against Ramapo. So they got one more to go. Oh no, the tenth would put them in the double bonus. Mark Brown talking things over. I'm going to try to eavesdrop here a little bit. Mark Brown, calm, cool, and collected, but very intense. He knows this not only affects him, his players, his team, but it's the postseason right here. And look, for a guy who's been at it as long as he has, he knows what it takes. Played at Siena College, upstate New York for Mike Dean. Such a great player. So much fun to watch back in the day. And I'd like to see Mark get a well-deserved trip to, to the postseason. over there in the white sweatshirt standing by the door, that is Jeffrey Jordan who will be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, there you go. Mansfield Warren with a pull-up three. Air ball. No good. And... They stopped the clock, but looked like too much time ran off. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. They might have to put some time back on the clock. Three-point NJCU lead with 0.2 seconds to go. And that should do it. Ladies and gentlemen, our final score here from the John J. Moore Athletic Center on Senior Night. NJCU Gothic Knights men's basketball team 81, Ramapo 78. And the Gothic Knights are going to the playoffs. Congratulations all around to Mark Brown and his staff, Abdul, Madison, Del Harrison, Trey Bailey, Ray, Jean, Paul, Gene Campbell. Excellent job by the staff and, of course, the players on senior night. Jeff Haddock Jr., Jameek Moore, and Sam Tony. Big props to all of you. And the season continues for the Gothic Knights at the NJAC playoffs. Log on to our website for more information. We're also stand by for a post-game interview with none other than Ira Thor, who's going to collect the player of the game. And we'll take it in from there. Nina, big props to you. Thank you so much. Nina Carbonaro. Graduate student here, such a big thank you and a big help tonight. I really appreciate it. I hope I see you. Can I sign it? Or give it back to you? Mark. Mark. I'm going to throw it to Ira Thor on the floor for a post-game interview. Ira's got senior Sam Tony, And he's got Jeff Haddock Jr. Both big games tonight for the Gothic Knights. In addition to Jameek Moore. Once again, big congratulations to NJCU for making the NJAC playoffs with the victory here tonight at the JMAC. Final score, 81-78. to And we are going to have a live interview from the hardwood with Ira Thor in just a few minutes. He's got Mark Brown. He's got Sam Tony, Jeff Haddock, and Jameek Moore. Ira Thor, take it away, and a big congrats to all you fellas. John, thank you very much, guys. The mission was clear, and the mission was pulled off today. Coach, congratulations. Must win game. Montclair won, and Rowan won, so we didn't win this. Season was over. You guys knew what the stakes were coming in. 
down in the in the first half to this team, down a little bit early in the second half, but you guys never quit, never would relinquish that that just drive to pull one out today. And you must be really happy with the effort your team put in on senior day in front of a huge crowd at home today. Yeah, the effort was there. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes defensively, especially on the one play. But we finished the game out, and that's what it's about, getting the victory. We got stuff together. We fought together offensively and defensively. We came out with the result. It was really spread around tonight. A lot of guys contributed. All three seniors on senior night contributed. Denzel Banks as well. Jameek, huge game, a lot of energy. Your first year with the team, and he scored 23 and 10. Sam got 12, and Jeff with a big first half with four triples. Just your thoughts on your seniors on senior day coming out and putting it all on the line. That was a special night. We knew it was a special night. We knew we had a lot at stake. Um, one of the things I've been proud of is that the last at least month of the season, we're coming together, and I always said that we need to be playing well at the end of the year. Uh, that's what the key. Jamaica and Sam and then were just saying it's a new season now. The regular season is over. We finished 500. That was our first goal. So now we got to go get one on Saturday, wherever and whoever we play. Stick around. We definitely want to talk to you a little bit more, but I want to get a word in from our three seniors. Guys, congratulations. A win that you had to have or that was it for this season. Sam, you've been the four-year player on this team. All the honors. You've been through thick and thin NCAAs three times. You've really never been in this type of situation where there were the last three years we knew that regardless of what happened in the end, Jax, we were probably in the NCAA tournament. This year, it was pretty clear we win the end, Jax, or the season's over. Tonight, it was even clearer we win tonight or the season's over. How did you guys deal with that pressure and come out with the result you had to have? We just kept saying play together and let's fight for each other. And ultimately, that's what it is. You can't win basketball with one person. It's got to be a collective effort, and that's what we've been doing. Um, we struggle sometimes. We uh, Coach thinks it's selfishness, but I think it's just sometimes we got an elite squad and we all want to produce, and that's really what it is. And when we play together, we all produce, and that's what wins those games. Jamie, you were key down the stretch. In fact, that fast break uh, pass off of Holmes pretty much was the dagger there at the end. Yeah, it became a free throw battle, but you have the ability with your speed and your athleticism to kind of change a game, and you did so tonight. 23 points, 10 boards. First time you've been in this spot with this program. Must feel pretty good to have contributed to this result. Yeah, I just know that, uh, you know, when I go out there, I know I'm going out there to w go to war with my brothers. So, like, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever we're going through, we're going to get through together. And I know that uh, this team want to win just as much as I do, so we just got to keep pushing. Jeff, man, you've had an up and down year, but today you had an up day. Came out big after a nice senior ceremony, and you were on fire drilling four threes. Must have felt good for you. throughout the year and my teammates had my back always kept the confidence in me and really I just knew it was going to come I just had to keep working after practice and everything and put up as many shots as I can and it came for today we had about a thousand people watching this game online today how many of them were your family in Vegas oh uh, it's probably I don't know there's a lot of them over there so it's, it's I give it a good probably half half of it half a uh, uh, thousand so probably about 500 something like that Senior day, guys. Obviously, an emotional day. It's different things for different guys. Jamie, your only year with the program. Jeff's been here for two and a half years and really has found a nice home on this campus. And Sam, obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're a future Hall of Famer here at NJSU. That, that's without saying. Each of you guys, I want to get a couple words what senior day means for you. Jamie, you're our newest addition. Uh, I just know that it feels good to, you know, last year I was in South Carolina. So for my senior night, it just feels good to be back home and play in front of my family, all my friends and stuff, got to come to the game and just being with my teammates. Like I said, those are my brothers, so it just felt good tonight. That custom-made uh, Moore shirt that your young son was wearing was, was awesome. That was one of the highlights of the night. Where'd you pull that from? Uh, his mom's aunt made it for us, so I, I shout out to her. I appreciate that. That's my boy. That was fantastic. Jeff, been with us for five semesters. We talked about it during senior day. No, obviously you had some pretty big numbers on the court. I think your contributions off the court at times were probably even bigger. What has your NJCU experience meant five semesters on this campus? Uh, five sem uh, semesters on this campus, it's all about giving back. You know, you got to appreciate what you have right now. So we had to work together and understand that this could have been our last game, but it, then again, this is our last season as seniors here at NJCU. So we had to work together and knew that we didn't want to end on a bad note. So we want to take it to the playoffs and hopefully we can get in the NJACs again and, and go further after that.
Sam, this is a loaded question for you, my friend. We've seen the highest highs and even some lows and some losses that you know we won't soon forget. This must have been a very emotional day for you to have your friends and family here. Somewhat, somewhat. Um, <laughs> yeah, my teammates been clowning me all year, but I'm gonna let them live. Nah, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy four years. Um, this is a home for me. This is some place I'm always gonna come back to and support. Um, this is a family atmosphere. Me and Coach Brown got an unbelievable relationship off the court. So we just gotta, we just gotta do what we can do to make it to the championship and win. We win the championship. I'm gonna leave with a super legacy. But either way, I left a legacy here, and that was my goal. And my goal is also to inspire other people, and I did that too. So. For me, it's just uh, continue to improve, continue to get better. Let's finish this season out, and let's make it happen. We will talk more about this in the coming days, but earlier today, we surprised Sam and his family with an unbelievable honor that's been bestowed by the United States Basketball Writers Association. This is the first time that we are saying this publicly. Today, we've announced that Sam Tony is the 2020 winner of the United States Basketball Writers Most Courageous Award. He is the first male in NCAA Division III history to ever win the award that Dick Vitale and some just legendary coaches over the course of history have won, Jim Valvano being another. You had no idea that was coming. Obviously, you're going to be honored at the Final Four this year. Your emotions when finding that out pregame today. I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I was lost, so um, I just got to... Uh I was just excited when I first heard it. I didn't know what to say. I was at a loss for words. Um, I know the baseball came behind me with my team when they said, We saved my God! That's amazing. That is, that's awesome. See, this is a home for me. This is some place I'm always going to come back to. But about that award, that's different. And um, I'm blessed to receive that. I thank God first and foremost. And I'm going to continue to go out here and keep doing what I do best. Last question. Our, our other guys have split on us, but... We're not sure who we're going to be playing in the playoffs. It could really be anybody right now. It's probably either going to be Rutgers, Newark. Um, I, th I think Rutgers, Newark is probably going to be in that three spot based on the math, but we'll find out later tonight who it is. But new season. New season. New season. That was what you guys were talking about in the huddle. Just talk about what that means, new season. New season. Just like we said, a goal at the end of the season to go 10 0. We wasn't able to do that, but now it's the season to go, what, I think four? You got to win four games? Or six? I win three games. Three? Well, look, even better. Got to win three. So this season, we need to, this uh, new season, we got to be 3 0, make it to the championship, and win. That's the most important part. We got to win. Well, that is two time NJAC Player of the Year, Sam Tony, Jameek Moore, Jeff Haddock on senior night, and Coach Mark Brown. I think they lost him. He's talking to the team after they came from behind and held on to knock off Ramapo 81 78. To had the win or the season was over, well, the season will continue. Saturday on the road in the NJAC quarterfinals. We'll see what the matchups are later tonight on NJACsports.com. John, we'll send it back to you to close us out tonight on Gothic Vision. Ira Thor, excellent job out there. Thank you so much. Great post-game interview. And Mr. Everything, Sam, Tony, such a pleasure to be able to call his last game of the regular season here at the JMAC. Once again, final score in the J-Mac, Ramapo falling to NJCU, 81-78. to And as Iris said, with this victory, NJCU has made the postseason. We are very grateful for that. And three terrific young men out on the floor here tonight on the hardwood. So for Ira Thor, I'm John Heffernan. We will be back for our postseason coverage on Saturday, I believe. you got to check the website for all of those matchups and more information. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody, on Gothic Vision. We'll see you next time.